Hare Krishna and welcome my dear friends to this sacred space where we embark on a journey of spiritual enrichment and inspiration. I am deeply honored to have you join me today as we delve into the timeless pages of one of our authored books to recite a beautiful spiritual pastime. Within the pages of this book lies a tapestry of stories, a tapestry woven with the threads of devotion, wisdom and love. The pastime I am about to share holds a special place in my heart and I believe it has the power to touch yours as well. As the words flow from the lips, let them be a bridge that connects us beyond the physical realm, transcending time and space. Let's remember that these stories are not just tales of the past, but living embodiments of eternal truths that resonate even today. Hare Krishna. After touring various holy places, Nityananda Prabhu finally reached Vrindavan. Visiting his previous pastime places, that is those of Lord Balram, he became ecstatic and began roaring loudly. Going without any food or water, he incessantly chanted the names of Krishna and rolled upon the sacred dust of Vrindavan Dham. By this time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had already started revealing his devotional mood in Navadvip. Mahaprabhu who is none other than Krishna started to feel an intense separation from his brother Nityananda who is none other than Balram and longed to have him in his association. As soon Lord Nityananda realized that Mahaprabhu had begun manifesting his ecstatic mood, he at once came over to Navadvip to assist the Lord in his magnanimous pastimes. But Nityananda Prabhu, on reaching Navadvip, did not directly go to meet his beloved Lord. Instead he went and hid himself in the house of a great devotee named Nandan Acharya. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur writes that Nityananda Prabhu's transcendental body shone with brilliant effulgent rays. He was exceedingly grave, incessantly chanting the holy names of Lord Krishna. His long arms, his enchanting eyes, and his body that was more beautiful than millions of moons, mesmerized one and all. Dressed as an Abhuta, he remained intoxicated by an intense love of God. Nandan Acharya was overwhelmed to have him as his guest. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, being the Supreme Lord, could understand that Sri Nityananda had already arrived at Navadvi. Mahaprabhu revealed to all of his associates that last night he had a wonderful dream. In his dream, he saw a big brother come and stop at his doorsteps. From the Radha came down a beautiful person adorning a blue dhoti and a blue turban. Holding a kamandalu in his left hand, his steps swayed to and fro in ecstasy. He kept inquiring about the whereabouts of Nimai Pandit's residence. When Mahaprabhu asked who he was, he laughed and replied that the two of them would meet the next day. Saying thus, Sri Chaitanya became absorbed in the mood of Haladhara Balaram. Then he ordered Srivas Pandit and Haridas Thakur to search all over Navadvip and bring that great personality, whom Mahaprabhu had seen in his dream, to him. Srivas Pandit and Haridas Thakur searched all the houses of Navadvip. They searched the residences of Vaishnavas, Sanyasis, Grihasthas, Atheists, etc. But in spite of searching for nine continuous hours, they could not find Lord Nityananda. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard of this, he smiled and understood the mysterious deep nature of Lord Nityananda. Only by the mercy of Sri Gaurachandra can one understand the glories of Lord Nityananda. Taking his associates along, Mahaprabhu arrived at Nandanachaya's house. Seeing the wonderful effulgent smiling form of Nityananda Ram, who was seated on a throne, all the devotees including Lord Chaitanya paid him their humble obeisances. Transcendental flowers and marks of tilak decorated his beautiful body. Even the moon hankered to catch a glimpse of his enchanting form. Vrindavan Das Thakur remarks that even the heavenly drink of Amrita, drinking which grants one immortality, is nothing as compared to beholding the smiling form of Nityananda Ram. Seen Kauranga Sundara, the very lord of his life, Nityananda Prabhu remains speechless. Nityananda Prabhu has if drank the beautiful form of Kaura Raya with his eyes. Mahaprabhu wanted to reveal the deep transcendental mood of Nityananda Prabhu to everyone. 
Hence he ordered Shrivas Pandit to read out the Pillow Shloka from Shrimad Bhagavatam, which talks about how adorning a peacock feather ornament upon his head, Lukarnika of flowers upon his ears, a yellow garment which shone as brilliantly as gold, and the Vijanti garland upon his neck, Lord Krishna entered the forests of Vrindavan and exhibited his transcendental form as the greatest of the dancers. When he danced, he beautified the ground with marks of his lotus footprints. Krishna filled the holes of his flute with nectar of his lips when he played upon it. The cowherd boys all sang his glories. As soon as Nityananda Prabhu heard these wonderful verses, he felt greatly ecstatic and fell down onto the ground unconscious. After some time, when he regained his senses, he began crying piteously. His loud roars as if penetrated the coverings of the universe. Devotees became anxious when Nityananda Prabhu fell onto the ground again and again. They feared that his bones must have been broken upon impact. Rolling on the dusty grounds, he sanctified Mother Earth with his tears. Beholding the beautiful form of Lord Gaurahari, he released deep breaths. At times he cried, at times he laughed, at times he danced raising his hands in the air. Witnessing the wonderful ecstatic symptoms exhibited by Lord Nityananda, all the devotees remained awestruck. Lord Chaitanya, along with his associates, shed tears of joy. Taking Lord Nityananda in his lap, Mahaprabhu, as if regained his life. It was as if Lakshman rested in Lord Ramchandra's lap. The emotions exhibited by the two brothers cannot be described in mere words. The same Ananta Shesh, who holds the entire creation upon his hoods, now peacefully rests within the laps of Sri Gora Chandra. Mahaprabhu explained that the divine symptoms exhibited by Lord Nityananda on that day were the very essence of the Vedic scriptures. Anyone who chants the glories of Nityananda Prabhu receives the greatest treasure of Krishna Prema. The Lord incessantly kept chanting the great glories of Toyan Nitai. Some said the two brothers resembled Ram Lakshman while some said they looked like Krishna and Arjuna. Anyone who hears this beautiful narration of the meeting between the two lords is relieved from the clutches of material nature and receives the pure love of God.